don't let people tell you that because of who you are, how you look, what gender you are, you have no options. If someone says to you, you don't know your lane, celebrate. Today I have with me Ms. Cheryl Harden. Ms. Cheryl is the author and speaker with a passion for organization change management. Cheryl is also an entrepreneur and co-founder of Capacity Squared. Cheryl uses carefully planned operational analysis and processes improvement strategies that inspire operational best practices. Cheryl has a degree in business with a minor in uh, English and information systems from University of Texas at Dallas. Cheryl, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Oh, thank you so much for having me. I am very excited to be on today. I'm excited to have you because as a small business owner and as an entrepreneur, I know life can be hectic. And you're one of those people, you're an expert of slowing things down and finding the most efficient ways to help businesses grow. And so I know this is going to be able to help some people out there who's already in business, years in business, or who are trying to get started. Uh, so Cheryl, before we get into the conversation, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, so thank you for that introduction. And you're absolutely right, because what I do is slow things down so that they can speed up. So I spent 30 years in the corporate world working with companies that were expanding their capacity rapidly through IPOs, mergers, acquisitions, um, <clears throat> efforts that were going to change everything about the business. And we use best practices to bring together disparate groups of people so that they can come up with an organization that's efficient and effective. Turns out best practices work equally for every business. It doesn't matter if you're 10 people or 10,000 people. I had the privilege of being invited to be part of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 small businesses program. I facilitate operations and processes in a part of their series of workshops on every area of business. And I worked with small businesses for the last seven years, and they've really become my heart and my passion because so much can be done very, very quickly to help a business that's in sort of the chaos of growing rapidly um, to get a firm foundation so that they can move forward. And that's really become my passion. Man, I love it. I love it because I know, again, as an entrepreneur, you have you wear so many different hats. And like you said, if it's 10 people or 10,000, the best practices can be transferred from one company to the next. It doesn't matter how many people that you have in your organization, but you got to have the best practices. You got to have the organization structure. And so, um, so I always like to say, let's get down to business. So here we are. So I know you have a book that's uh, currently being published by uh, Business Expert Press, a division of Harvard Press, uh, about uh, about growing business capacity. Sure. What do you mean by capacity, and what does that look like for a small business owner? So capacity is that room to grow that you need. If you're going to take on the next really big client, the next really big contract, if you're going to expand and double your business this year, you have to have space to hire new people, to do advertising, to market your work, get those um, proposals out there. And then you have to have the space once you've won the work to actually do it. And so what 
I have done is taken the questions that I get for people after they graduate from accelerators and I've answered those questions throughout the book. Okay. What is my culture? How do I build a good culture? We've told you to have a marketing plan. How do I put one together? If I'm redoing my fan finances, where do I start? And when do I know that I'm finished? How do I actually plan future work? All of those questions that I get asked, I've poured them into that book with checklists and step-by-steps so that you have one place to go when you're looking for the answer to a question. Small businesses, I so admire the owners, but they're often working 50 to 100 hours a week. They don't have time to go search for an answer. Which brings me to my next question, because I mean, you bring up a great point. As a business owner, we talk about growing capacity, scaling resources you know a lot of times we get in it first off we don't know where to find the resources and then we get in it so we're, we're scaling we're growing our business but then we it's, it's more resources that may be available to us once we get into the business where can small business owners find resources the information to go to help them scale and, and grow capacity well <clears throat> so there are all kinds of resources there are the you know there are helpful lists and information and training and podcasts and mm -hmm. that's what I am putting into my new platform, a new community for small business owners called Capacity Squared, which will launch soon. There are the human resources. And one of the things I don't think small business owners realize is there's flexibility in that. What often happens when you're growing and, and you're on a very tight budget is you go out to look for the person you need, find out you can't afford them and get the person you can afford who may not have all of the skills and experience necessary to really do what you wanted to do when you started out on your hiring quest. That's right. <laughs> I am encouraging small business owners to take a step back and consider part-time and fractional people. So, mm. What do I mean by part timers? So I mean part time professionals. And these are people who have the years in the experience and they expect to be paid through the hours that they work at a professional rate. But as you're growing, you will often find you only need half a person. You really only needed 20 or 30 hours worth of work. You don't yet have 40 for a full time person. So you can afford to take on somebody more professional if you're only paying them for the hours you actually need. That's right. That's right. I love what you're saying there, sure, because as a, as a business owner, you have to be creative. Sometimes you have to think outside the box. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if you're growing and you you want to go hire this individual, but you don't have the resources just yet. Right. So now it's like, hey, well, you still need to fill that seat. Maybe let's get someone part time or get a couple part timers to fulfill that role or maybe bring on someone with a little less experience. And that's where you come in with the organizational change management process. What does your training program look like? Bring them on board and you can help them scale up to get the information to do the job that, that they're going to be in. Is that about accurate? That that is exactly accurate. And so one of the secrets to bringing on people and getting them up to speed is using fractional leadership. Wait a minute. Slow down. Slow down. So so we have a moment on these shows where I, I like to say you're about to drop dimes or you're dropping dimes. So I, I keep my pencil because I'm going to take take notes. So one of the ways that you can get them up to speed is what we call fractional leadership. Break that down for us, Cheryl. So small businesses cannot afford to see sweet. And sometimes they need C-suite direction, but again, not full time. So imagine that you bring on somebody who's got 30 years of experience at the director and VP le level, but for one day a week, one day a month, um, <clears throat> 
as you need to make crucial decisions. Again, you're paying them what they're worth, yep. but only for the time you actually need them. And one of the best examples of that is sales. So perhaps you can't afford a $150,000 base salary for a really great salesperson right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. But you get a C-suite level executive who can help you sit down and create a sales plan, give you your team that information and training and meet with them however often that you need to make sure that they're on target. You avoid the chaos of trying to figure things out and people being new and um, even not having the right contacts. Because if you're hiring a fractional, they've got years of contacts. Imagine being able to call somebody up and say, I can't get to my perfect customer. Will you make an introduction to my salesperson? Um, <clears throat> that works in operations. It works in HR. It works in finance. Small businesses tend to think they just can't have what they need. But mm. if you define your needs better, the people are actually out there. I love what you're saying, because in business, you, you have to keep your company moving forward. You, you can't stay stagnant. And then when you you, th you think you can't make a move, but in reality, you have to. I love what you said, the fractional leadership. You have to kind of bring it down and redefine exactly what you're trying to do to hit, hit your targets because the goals are still there. Right. I mean, yeah. You, yeah, if you if you rent out of space every first of the month or whenever you sign the lease, that that bill is still coming. You know, the overhead is still there. So you have to continue to move your company forward. So I know it's things out there about like accelerators for businesses and incubator incubators. Can you define the two and uh, which one is better for someone who's just new start now? Tell me about that. OK, <clears throat> so. The which one is better, I would say it depends. You've got to understand okay. what you're looking for. Um, years ago, when 10,000 small businesses started as an accelerator, there weren't any out there. But now there's a hundred. Almost every banking program, almost every uh, financial institution has some kind of accelerator program. Accelerator programs take businesses that already exist and have been around and proven to be solid and help them come in to learn what they need to do to build that foundation so that they can grow and move forward. These we're talking about experienced entrepreneurs here. Incubators, on the other hand, they're working with startups to help you to help businesses get a good foundation that they can start from. They might even help get funding. Okay. So we're, and again, there are many of them. The important thing to do when you're looking for an accelerator or an incubator is to find one that really fits you, that really fits your goals for the next one to five years. Because when you come through an incubator or accelerator, you should have a solid business or growth plan with step by steps for how you're going to meet your goals. Sometimes that's to launch a new opportunity. Sometimes it's to launch a new business. Um, you should understand your financials by the time that you're finished. And you should know how to approach people if you're looking for an income investment. So let me ask you. So let me ask you a question, Cheryl. So when we talk about accelerator, as someone who's established, would you say maybe two to five years been in business, and then the incubator is someone from start, just starting out from maybe zero to to twelve months experience? Is that what that looks like? So if you're out there looking for an accelerator program, I've been in business a couple of years, right? Maybe two plus right. years. Is that what that looks like? And then as an incubator, I'm just starting out. I don't know even maybe know how to form my LLC or um, I know how to form my LLC, but then when my doors open, what do I do? 
And so incubators will start at a at a variety of levels. Again, that's okay. deciding what you need. So if you're a startup that's not yet formed, you might want to go through the ground up program at United Way. They're going to help you figure out everything from ground zero. Um, <clears throat> if you're already formed and you're just trying to to put together a solid foundation so that you can get financing, well, then you might, and you're a technical, technical company, you might look at something like tech starters or uh, tech wildcatters, or uh, there are incubators and accelerators that are industry specific. They might be, uh, they might be location specific. They might be specific based on your background. The important yeah. thing about finding a right, the right incubator program or the, even the right accelerator program, again, is to really sit down and define your needs. Because um, you may be a woman and going through a woman-owned incubator accelerator may be very, very appealing and the right answer. Or you may find that going through an accelerator program that's open to everyone will provide the connections that you need. So be very specific when looking that you're going to get what you sought. I, I love it because not only if, you th if you're thinking about getting into business and you don't know where to turn to, I mean, you just threw out a, a lot of different things. And I'm a, I'm a commission family. Go back and, and check the replay because I'm, I'm telling you, she's giving you, sharing the information, sharing the resources. Uh, you said ground up by United Way. You know, that's, that's something if you're thinking about trying to figure out this, the formulation of your company. There's one right there. So it's many different ways. Cheryl, what is peer to peer uh, learning and why is that important? Well, <clears throat> here's something that small business owners do not take enough advantage of it can be very lonely out there and oh, oh yeah you feel <laughs> you're right like, about that you feel like you're the only one having the problems that you're having when in reality they are the problems that everybody from every industry has as they grow and if you are not involved in a community you don't have anyone to ask those questions. You don't have anyone to share your challenges. Often by sharing your challenges with other business owners, in a small group, you can discover all the ways that they met that same challenge. You can have great advice for someone else, even if they have more than experience, more experience than you do. Um, I have a friend in the 10,000 small businesses program, and she tells the story of how um, there was a small group of construction people and she put a woman who was very new to the business at the table with all of these members who, who'd had 20 or 30 years. And she thought, wow, she's really going to grow. And then she came in one morning and the woman was sitting with one of the oldest members, a gentleman who'd been building houses for 30 years mm -hmm. and very gently and slowly explaining how to use a construction project management tool to lower his costs and be more effective and efficient. She was actually teaching him. Wow. You know who you know and, and how they can help you until you get into a small business support group. We all know things that are valuable that we can share with each other. And it, it is very important to me. I am on a mission to end small business owner isolation. What you're saying is so, so important because you do feel like you're on an island. You feel like you're the only one going through these problems. You, you're figuring out, you're thinking like, why am I the only one experiencing this? And it's, it's lonely because, I mean, if you don't, you know, if you don't have friends that may be in business and you're trying to have this conversation, you go into the people who may not understand where you're coming from, it could be a disconnect. 
And I think what you're saying is it's a common thread no matter what industry you're in, right? So you can be in healthcare, you can be in engineering, you can be in all these different fields, but you can cross pollinate ideas, right? So if I'm a business owner, I'm always trying to think strategically. I mean, you just gave a wonderful example. That person's been in business for 30 years and here this person is coming to them who hasn't, I don't think they were in their industry, but telling them how to use a certain tool, telling them how, uh, how to use best practices. And, and there you have it. So network, get around other business owners, guys, network. It doesn't have to be in the same industry, right? Uh, because again, if you're in a different industry, it's a common threads in business that you're like, oh, you, you're dealing with the same problem over here? I, I have the same issue in my industry. And you'll find that a lot of this stuff, it cross pollinates, it's, 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 it happens to all of us, right? Um, that is you know, so true, Jarvis. And I learned that early in my career because I've worked in about every industry that um, that's out there, food service, military service. Um, I've worked with tons of manufacturing for everything from manufacturing toilets to manufacturing perfumes. The steps are the same. Wow. The, the sticking points are the same. And so if you're learning best practices, if you're taking care of your co company culture, if you're building a workforce that has the experience and skill or a way to get the experience and skill that you need, you are going to benefit. Sometimes being in a peer group with people from other industries is mm -hmm. actually a breath of fresh air when you can see they have the same problems as you, That's but right. also they have clear eyes and objective perspective. That's right. So they may see something that you don't know. That's right. And it's not because you aren't smart enough or you're not as good as they are. They just are looking at your business with fresh eyes. That's right. So um, what I heard you say was the formula is already there, right? The process right. is no matter like from if you manufacture refrigerators or toys, the, the process is already there. You just got to be open enough to see it and understand that things happen along the way and just tap into other people's resources and, and, and ex experience. Right. Um, sure. I had a, a lender on in one of my shows and it was more a traditional lending. Right. Mm -hmm. But I now know that there are many different ways outside of traditional lending. Can you talk to us about some other uh, non-traditional ways for lending for small business owners? Yeah, so access to capital can be a really big challenge when you're a new business or when you're a very small business. Mm -hmm. And access to capital is really very important when you're trying to grow because um, often your opportunities come and you've got to make some investment in order to see the benefit. Um, if you're very, very early on, and your clients are um, sort of fortune 100s and 500s and, and very solid people, you can sometimes use factoring. Now, mm. I don't recommend factoring if you can get any other kind of a loan. But if you can't, if you don't have yet the credit to do that, then what a factor will do is they will offer you money in exchange for invoices. So you have an invoice that's coming due in 30 to 60 days, but you don't have the money to cover your expenses until then. Well, they'll give you anywhere from 95 to 97% of the invoice, and then they collect the invoice and take the difference. You have to be very, very careful with factors you have to make sure that they are they have a solid reputation that they're not going to take advantage of you you shouldn't have to pay a lot of closing costs up front but it can be the difference when you're very very new and getting started and accepting that really big client or not um there are also banks who are um first chance banks cdfis um 
they work with organizations like um, the SBA to help give loans to businesses who may not have yet the experience and credit to get them from a traditional bank. So um, Lift Fund is one. And they you say Lift, Lift Fund? L I F T? Lift Fund? Okay. Lift Fund. F U N D. Lift Fund is one. Um, there are others out there. Do a Google search for CDFI. And they will even help you become credit worthy. There are programs that they can get you into that will help you clear up your financials, put your business plan in order and make the best presentation that you can get. Now, <clears throat> they're not going to give you the same terms as a regular bank. You should be prepared for that. You're a higher risk. You're going to get a little bit <clears throat> higher interest rate. Correct. Um, Another great place to look is the SBA. The SBA has all kinds of startup programs and they can guide you to funds and lenders that are non-traditional that work specifically with them that um, aren't CDFIs. They can help you negotiate with the government for payments that will allow you to get started. And then we can't forget grant money. Mm, talk to us about grant money. Even if you're a for-profit organization, there may be grants out there for you. There are specific industry grants. There are grants that are given by state, local, and federal governments when they're trying to build up business in certain areas. Um, here in Texas, there are quite a few grants for exporting. If you're trying to build an export business, you should wow. look to Texas State and see what's available, how they might be willing to help you. Um, there, We saw last year a lot of Black Lives Matter grants. Mm -hmm. and, um, it doesn't matter where, the, why the money is coming to you if you're eligible and it's going to benefit you in the way that you promise it will. Go for that money. Go for the free money. Absolutely. Cheryl, listen, you know, Maya Angelou, the great Maya Angelou once said, once you know better, you do better. Yeah. Family, the information, if you're new, you're thinking about starting a business, the information Cheryl just shared is valuable. Replay this video. Cheryl, can people reach out to you to maybe help or assist or uh, point them in the right direction or if I tell you what if they have questions put them in the comment section and I'll flood them up to you is it okay uh, how do you want to move it I would be thrilled if you will flood those questions up to me if they will give me their direct contact information then I'm happy to respond personally um, because I may need more details in order to properly answer the question absolutely okay hey last question for you Cheryl what advice would you give your 15 year old self today? Uh, so my 15 year old self was growing up in the seventies. And what I would tell my 15 year old self is not to believe the doubters, not to believe the doubters. Don't let people tell you that because of who you are, how you look, what gender you are, you have no options. If someone says to you, you don't know your lane, celebrate. Mm. If you're out of your lane, you're probably preparing to do big things. I love it. I love it. When does the book come out? Because we're going to have to uh, uh, back on when the book uh, comes out. It um, comes out in June. I'm really excited about it. I hope it's going to help a lot, a lot of people because a book can get to people with that information that it would take me years to get to the same number of people. That's right. That's right. So let's do this. Uh, we're going to have you back uh, when that book drops so we can talk about the book. I got to give me a copy. Uh, maybe I can pre-order my copy and, and get through it. And so when we have you on, we can kind of go through it together. So I'm excited. Cheryl, thank you so much for coming on today and having this conversation. I know we helped some people today 
like I always say, hey, if it if it touched one person, if it helped one person, we did our job. We did our job. Uh, Cheryl, again, I look forward to having you on another time um, in June. The book drops right in June. Yes. And okay. thank you so much for having me on. This has been such a pleasure. I really enjoyed my time with you. Well, thank you. Thank you. So, um, again, I, we're helping. Right. We're here to serve. And, and, and that's the whole reason. I started this platform is serving others, get sharing information, your experience. Uh, you can't walk into a, a company on day one and get this information. So it's, it's similar to my writing. My book is, you know, we create these shows and people can go back and replay them. I mean, you shared a lot of great information. So I'm excited to have you on. Thank you so much. And again, in June, I'm sure we'll t talk in, in between time, but uh, we'll talk to you soon. OK. Absolutely. Have a wonderful rest of your day.